Using the bone tool in Animate CC allows you to link different limbs or objects together so that you can easily move them in a process called inverse kinematics. It allows us to link different objects together and create more natural movement very easily by repositioning all of those linked limbs. If I click on this skeleton, you can see that each of the different pieces of this skeleton have been linked together, and they essentially have joints like a normal human body that allows us to reposition each of the limbs or parts on their own individually. Now there are a lot of tutorial videos out there that explain how to use inverse kinematics in the bone tool to create walk animations or body movement sequences, but you can actually use the bone tool and inverse kinematics for really simple animations like making seaweed move in a scene where a fish is swimming in a pond. So let's go over to this example and what we have here is we have a pre-created animation that's using a lot of the armature layers which is what we call the layers that we use the bone tool and the inverse kinematics on. So if I scrub my playhead through this you can see that the seaweed does move a little bit so we have um, sort of that motion of the pond and we did this by just painting a stroke and then adding bones to that stroke and then repositioning them on the armature layer. Now it does get a little bit weird. You can see as we scrub through there's a little bit of um, weirdness happening with each of these strokes but in terms of the time versus the effort, this is a really easy way to do some complicated motion. So for me, I'm okay with these little things that are happening here because that's not the most important part of my animation. So I'll go ahead and leave these pre-created seaweeds up and I'll show you how we did this. We went and created a new layer and you don't necessarily have to name this layer because it's actually going to, as soon as you start adding bones, it's going to move it to a different layer. So you don't have to name this one because you're going to probably throw it away in the end anyway. So we'll go over here to the brush tool, oh, I'm sorry, the paintbrush tool, and I'm going to choose what my stroke color is and I'll probably do a dark green just to differentiate it from the ones that were already made and I'll increase my stroke width and change the width profile to something that's a little bit more not perfectly straight. So I'll probably choose this width profile of two. Now what I need to do is just draw that. Let's go ahead and make it a hundred. I'll go ahead and draw that seaweed and it looks a little bit weird at first when you first paint it, but as soon as it drops there, you can click the move tool and it looks okay. Notice that when I created that stroke, it's in merge drawing mode. You can tell because it has all these dots when you click and select it. And this is perfect for us to use that bone tool. Once we have the seaweed selected, we'll go over here to the bone tool and we have to distinguish where our anchor point is going to be. So because I want the top part to wave and the bottom part not to wave so much, I want to start from the bottom and work my way up. If I wanted to include an animation of a hook coming down with maybe a wiggling worm on it, I would maybe want the to start at the top of the worm so that it looked like it was positioned or hooked and the rest of it would be wiggling down. So I'll go ahead and click here and drag out my first bone. And then from that connecting point, drag out my second, and last, do the third. As soon as I've done that, it already creates an armature layer for me. And as I said before, that original layer two, I can go ahead and delete that because it no longer has any artwork on it. In order to animate this now, you can see this bright green color that tells us that this is ready to be animated. So I'll position my playhead somewhere in time and grab my move tool, click that object, and just slightly move it. So let's say I want it to move this way and go down a little bit further in time and maybe I want it to move quite a bit back and notice that as I move that top bone, all these other bones are repositioning as well. So we'll come back in, maybe I want it to squash a little bit more and by the end have it come back up maybe cross over a little bit and last but not least give it last position state and probably want to swing it a little bit back that way okay so let's go ahead and see what this looks like 
we scrub it and it looks like it's moving pretty well. And then we can test it out by going to control and choosing test. This will bring up the Swift file where we can actually see that animated seaweed. So this would be great for seaweed. It could work for maybe the tail on a kite or the flame on a candle. There's a lot of different things that this could be used for and you're able to create really easy motion very quickly with not, without a lot of effort on your part.